my name is Betty and I'll be talking about getting started with direct secure messaging. We'll cover what is DSM, who can send and receive DSMs, what kind of documents can I send and receive, how to configure users for DSM, and how do I register my practice with the Direct Trust Network. Direct Secure Messaging, or DSM, is a HIPAA-compliant encrypted messaging system that facilitates exchanging personal health information between medical organizations. Anyone in the practice can send and receive DSMs. The user does not have to be a provider. PCC recommends that you only create accounts for users who will communicate using DSMs, such as clinicians who transmit and receive electronic transition of care documents. The company that PCC partners with to provide direct secure messaging is Updocs. When PCC enables DSM for your practice, it becomes part of the Updocs network. You can search, send, and receive direct secure messages with anyone in the Updocs network. You can also send and receive messages with organizations that are not in the Updocs network, but you need to know their direct secure message address. If your practice decides to register with the Direct Trust Network, in addition to being able to search the Updocs Network, you will also be able to search the Direct Trust Network. You can send summary of care records in CCDA format from the patient's chart in PCC EHR. You can also send and receive PDF files. Direct Secure Message can send up to 50 megabytes or 5,000 kilobytes, including the message and any attachments. PCC EHR supports rendering of raw CCDAs and PDFs in the DSM import dialog. There are basically four workflow activities associated with direct secure messaging. Sending and receiving DSMs, matching inbound messages from the messaging queue to the correct patient, reconciling data from the CCDA with the patient's chart, and deleting the DSM from the messaging queue if necessary. Only sending and receiving DSMs require that the user has a direct secure messaging account. Anyone in the practice with access to the messaging queue can match inbound messages to the correct patient. Access to the messaging queue is configured on a role-by-role -role basis in user administration, which is located under the tools menu. Likewise, anyone in the practice with permission can reconcile data from a CCDA into the patient's chart. After direct secure messaging is turned on for your practice, you will use the user administration tool to create individual DSM accounts. Direct secure messaging accounts are configured in user administration on a user by user basis. PCC recommends again that you only create accounts for users who will communicate using DSM, such as clinicians who transmit and receive electronic transition of care documents. You will also want to create various user roles for staff who will be reviewing incoming DSMs, creating tasks, reconciling data with the patient's chart, and or deleting DSMs when necessary. We'll start with configuring permissions for the users that may be reviewing incoming DSMs, reconciling data with the patient's chart, or when necessary, deleting DSMs. These users do not have to have direct secure messaging accounts. It's up to the practice how they want to handle creating permissions for direct secure messaging tasks. Some practices create a DSM role and other practices include these permissions in the admin, provider, or nurse roles. Permission to view, reconcile, and delete direct secure messages are configured under user administration in roles. Under the tools menu, select user administration and then click on the roles tab. Select the role you wish to edit or click add role to add a new role. Under queues, select messaging to give users in a role access to view direct secure messages in the DSM queue. Select reconciliation to give users in a role the ability to reconcile summary of care records with the patient chart. Select direct secure message removal to give users in a role the ability to delete DSMs. For example, you may want to delete a DSM that you receive for a patient that's not in your practice. Now that we've covered how to configure permissions for staff who will be working with the DSMs once they've been received by the practice, we'll cover how to configure a direct secure messaging account for a specific user who will be sending the DSM. Again, PCC recommends that you only create accounts for users who will communicate using direct secure messaging. Under the tools menu, select user administration, select the user, 
and click Edit User. On the Direct Secure Messaging tab, click on the Create Direct Secure Messaging Account button. The DSM address will be the PCC user's username at practiceacro.pcc-direct.com. The status defaults to active when you add a user. If you ever wanted to deactivate a DSM user, this is where you would do so. Provider indicates if the user is a provider or not. Direct Research opt-in allows other users to find your direct secure message address. PCC recommends that the practice leaves this as opt-in so that other organizations can find them and send messages to them. The user's direct address will also appear in the My in the user's My Account tool, which can be accessed from the file menu. You can provide your address to other medical practices and they can use the address to send you transition of care documents. After, direct, after direct secure messaging is enabled for your practice, you can search, send, and receive direct messages with other users within the Updocs network. If the practice wants to join and be listed in the direct trust network, they need to have one person at the practice, like the practice or office manager, go through ID proofing so that the practice can join. The practice is not required to set up a vetted user. They can still send and receive DSMs with other healthcare organizations without going through ID proofing. However, if the practice does not go through ID proofing, they will not have access to the direct trust network to be able to search for other healthcare organizations in the network. The practice will also not be visible to other practices in the direct trust network. Only one DSM user at your practice needs to go through ID proofing. This does not need to be done for all DSM users. Once one person has registered with the direct trust network, all DSM users at the practice will have access to the direct trust network. You can do the ID proofing either from the user administration tool or from the My Account tool. I'm going to show you how to do this from the My Account tool. To begin the ID proofing process for yourself, from the file menu, select My Account and click on the blue link, which will take you to the Updocs website where you will go through the registration process. The Updocs website will walk the user through the registration process. The user will need to enter identifying information and answer demographic questions to verify their identity. Once the process is complete, you will see the result in the user administration tool or in the My Account tool. Please reach out to PCC support if you have issues completing the online ID proofing. Should your authorized user leave the practice, you will need to contact PCC support to receive a link to enroll a new authorized user. Once one user at your system has registered your practice with the Direct Trust Network, all Direct Secure Message users will have access to the Direct Trust Network. When you work with Direct Secure Messages in PCC EHR, you can use a custom protocol that includes components that will help you respond to the information in the message and take action. Your practice can customize the direct secure message protocol in the protocol configuration tool. For example, you may want to add the patient's problem list, history, or upcoming appointment components to assist your workflow when you read and evaluate a direct secure message. And that completes the getting started training.